The Holocaust and all of its atrocities brought up the best in people. In these times of hardship and death were people who rose to fight for the preservation of a race. Shunai Sugihar was one of these figures. A man who had the courage to say no to his government orders and who had broken a barrier of Jewish oppression. 40,000 people owed their lives thanks to this man, who had risked his career and lifestyle for the preservation of a culture. The Jewish crisis was a result of Nazi Germany's actions in World War II. Several years after World War I, a man named Adolf Hitler began to gradually increase power in Germany. When the Great Depression struck in 1929, Hitler's explanation of it as a Jewish communist plot was accepted by many Germans, promising a strong Germany, higher employment rates, and national glory. He attracted millions of voters. Hitler had created a scapegoat for the German people, which the majority of the population had continued to endorse. Not long after the invasion of Poland, Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party signed the Tripartite Pact on September 27, 1940, with Italy and Japan to create the Axis Alliance. This pact had consequently created a complex political relationship between Japan and Germany, and a feeling of distrust was felt by both countries throughout the beginning of the war. As a result of this tension, Japan had sent multiple spies, including Shunei Suihara, to Europe to record information on Soviet and German troop movements. And uh, Japanese authorities lost trust in their ally um, and decided to create a new mission uh, that would enable them to, to, um, to get information uh, about Germany and Soviet Union too. And Kaunas in Lithuania was chosen as a very good location. Unlike Germany, led by its dictator Hitler, Japan had a more humane perspective for their Jewish population. The Japanese never built or operated exclamation camps or crematoria, nor did they murder Jews because of their race or religion. The idea of genocide against this group of foreigners never crossed their minds. However, they would not sympathize with Jews either if it meant risking political relations with Germany. Lithuania is a country located in the Baltic region above Poland and west of Russia. When Adolf Hitler rose to power, he had made the molotov ribbentrop Pact with the USSR. This pact had surrounded Poland on two fronts, and it was not long before Poland's capital fell under German occupation. The country had fallen into the hands of the USSR and Nazi Germany. And in the fall and winter of 1939, an estimated 15,000 Polish Jews found temporary refuge in politically independent Lithuania, most of them in Vilna. Shinai Sampo Sugihara, born on January 1, 1900, in Yatsugifu Prefecture in Japan, he was named after an officer, Kosu Sugihara, who had aided his father when he had tuberculosis. Sugihara's mother from the traditional samurai class and his father came from the relatively new middle class in the modernization of Japan. A set of traditional samurai guidelines and moral laws from his mother and religion would also influence Sugihara's life later on. Sugihara's father had wanted him to become a medical doctor, which was not Sugihara's preference for career. Instead of becoming a doctor, he went to diplomatic school in Harbin, China. In Harbin, he became fluent in German and Russian. Both skills would help him later on. So, uh, yeah, uh, like even the Russians said, he seemed more Russian than the Russians. After Sugihara left his position in the Manchurian office, he married a Belarusian woman named Claudia Apolonova and converted to Orthodox Christianity shortly after. They later divorced in 1935, and Sugihara later married a Japanese woman named Yukiko Kachuchi. Yukiko later gave birth to four children, Haruki, Kayaki, Haruki, and Nobuki Sugihara. In 1939, Sugihara was sent to his fourth post in Kaunas, Lithuania, where he would make history. He arrived at this position three days after Germany invaded Poland and when World War II began. Shunai Sugihara awoke to find a line of Jewish refugees standing outside of his gate, developing down the block. As a result, Sugihara sent a desperate plea to Japan, stating that he needed approval and authorization to issue the visas. Three times he asked, and three times he was denied. Sugihara had two decisions. One decision was for Chunai to fulfill the orders of his Axis government and refuse to help the Jewish refugees. Or he could obey the Japanese principles he had learned as a young child, to help others in shortage. 
Sugihara's strong sense of honor, discipline, and devotion to a common cause helped him decide to act against the government orders and to help Polish, Lithuanian, and other Jewish refugees. After his decision, Sugihara continued to handwrite visas, reportedly spending 18 to 20 hours a day on them, producing a normal month's worth of visas each day until September 4th. Sugihara had tackled his work in a manner of complete ferocity and obsession. He wrote so much that he had stopped counting the names of the people he issued visas to when he struck somewhere about 2000, and Yukiko, his wife, would massage his swollen hands. Sugihara would maintain issuing visas this way for three weeks, scarcely getting any sleep because of his persistent thoughts. Shunei Sugihara was raised to obey his superiors without question or protest, but yet he ignored the refusal of the Japanese government and issued 10-day travel visas to the refugees outside of his building. Yet his devotion to writing visas had continued until the very end of his stay at Lithuania. He had to leave his post before the consulate was closed. By that time, he had granted thousands of visas to Jews, many whom were heads of households and thus permitted to take their families with them. On the night before their scheduled departure, Sugihara and his wife stayed awake writing out visa approvals. According to witnesses, he was still writing visas while in transit from his hotel and after boarding the train had thrown out visas into the crowd of desperate refugees out the train's window. The Jewish refugees took the Trans-Siberian Railroad across Russia to the port in Vladivostok, where they sailed to Japan. In Japan, the Jews were put into a town called Kobe, where they were welcomed with open arms by the local Japanese residents and Polish diplomat Chadius Romare. Sugihara worked in Bucharest, Romania from 1942 to 1944. When the Soviets captured Romania, they imprisoned him and his family for 18 months. And then uh, Konstantin and his family were swept up by the, uh, the, Ru- the Russians. And then because he was a, uh, you know, a member of uh, an enemy country, he, he did have to uh, live in a series of uh, internment camps, almost like a POW camp, uh, on his entire journey from uh, Romania. Sugihara's family was released in 1946 and returned to Japan through the Trans-Siberian Railroad and the Nakoda port. In 1947, the Japanese Foreign Office had ordered Sugihara to resign from his position as a consulate as a result of downsizing. Sugihara afterward took a variety of cheap and many old jobs to support his family. At one point, he was recorded to sell light bulbs as a door-to-door salesman. After suffering the death of one of his sons in 1947, Sugihara used his knowledge of the Russian language to work in the Soviet Union and support his family overseas. Again, yeah, because of his uh, fluency in Russian, he uh, ended up, his final job was working for this import-export company for a Japanese company, but he was stationed in Moscow. In 1969, Sugihara was greeted by the Israeli government. Finally, in 1985, Shunai Sugihara was granted the honor of Righteous Among the Nations by the government of Israel. However, Shunai Sugihara was too ill to travel to Israel, and instead his wife Yukiko accepted it physically for his behalf. Sugihara died the year after his report on July 31, 1986, in the outskirts of Tokyo. Sugihara's legacy still continues, however, and the people he has connected to numbers in the tens of thousands. He currently has a physical impact in Vilnius, Lithuania, Little Tokyo, Los Angeles, and Yatsu, Japan, where there are memorials for his deeds. He and the sons had managed to issue visas on a gargantuan proportion and managed to work harder in a day than a regular diplomat worked in a month. His feats are huge, and yet he remains forgotten. 6,000 Lithuanian and Polish Jewish refugees around the world owe their lives thanks to Chuni Sugihara's work. And many people day by day soon come to realize his name and title. He broke multiple barriers including a wall of Nazi idealism, Japanese culture, and a barrier of Jewish oppression. He shows how just one man can make such a large impact on the world, and how we could all do good for humanity and society. Shunei Sugihara was a hero who changed the world.